Hello, this is Dustin Reinders. I am the supervising attorney of the education team here at Disability Rights Texas. And I wanted to check in with you and thank our friends at the Houston Chronicle and Houston Public Media for really incredible follow-up joint investigation into the status of special education in our state. What they found is that even after a year of the corrective action plan where the federal government was expecting the Texas Education Agency to make sure that students who should be eligible for special education are finally identified and evaluated, that we've only made one percentage point of improvement. And so we still have hundreds of thousands of Texas students who we would suspect as being eligible for special education who are not receiving the services that they need. That's very consistent with what we still see here at Disability Rights Texas. Unfortunately, we're still in a time where even though schools may be getting a little better at responding to parental requests for evaluation, they are not doing the proactive evaluation of children who it's their responsibility to identify. And a lot of the reason for that is that the Texas Education Agency has dragged its feet in the reforms that were required by the federal government under our state's corrective action plan. Um, specifically, the Chronicle and Houston Public Media found that TEA had not yet provided resources that they were supposed to to parents. That's so important to us here at Disability Rights Texas because we really try to do the best we can to keep you all in this community informed of your rights with the information on our, our website and in social media and in the trainings that we give in the community, but we cannot do it alone. Our state is too big. There are too many communities that have unequal access to the, to the information that's out there. So we ask for all of your help in sharing the resources available on our website and the knowledge that you have with people who are, who are less likely to have that information. On the topic of getting evaluated for special ed, it is so incumbent that we share the word that families request the evaluations in writing if they're still being denied. And the, the forms on how to do that are all available on our website at drtx.org. Uh, TEA um, has also not provided the information that schools need. Um, schools have so many questions about how to better identify children with disabilities. And one of the things that I thought was really important about the media coverage uh, this week was that it showed that the Regional Service Center, Region 4 here in Houston, given responsibility, special responsibility, on child find, this important issue of identifying all the children who need special education, um, went to the Texas Education Agency desperately seeking guidance on solutions of how to get waiting lists of children identified when there just aren't enough evaluators. I was really impressed to see that Region 4 came to TEA with a creative solution. They said, you know, some families um, have outside evaluations and already know about disability issues that, that the children could be served with. Our schools don't have enough psychologists. Could we, in some cases, go ahead and use those outside evaluations and start providing special ed services so that children don't have to wait any longer and struggle any longer? Uh, knowing that, that we may have to do additional supplemental tests uh, on the school side at a later date. And according to an email from the special ed director um, at Region 4, uh, she was told on the phone by our highest ranking special ed official in Texas, Justin Porter, uh, that they should not do that. That he didn't want there to be any kind of jumping the gun and providing services to children until a full evaluation is done. And he didn't offer any other solutions for how we're going to make sure that these children get promptly identified and served. And then, uh, even more shocking, in that email correspondence from the Region 4 director to districts, um, it was shared that he suggested that there would be some form of grace period to districts for not promptly identifying children. You know, I was asked what kind of grace period would be reasonable, and I reminded people that this law was passed in 1975. There is no room for grace at this point in time. Children need served yesterday, and they need served today. Um, in responding to this email, Justin Porter has claimed 
that the Region 4 Special Ed Director misspoke and that he never gave the advice that is contained in her email. Um, I wasn't on that call and I don't know what was said. But I'll tell you this, in my experience, the regional service centers and districts are truly hungry for solutions to try uh, to move forward in this process and TEA is not giving them what they need. I have no reason, um, Ms. Gates, who was in the, the job at Region 4, um, is now in retirement. And I think it's somewhat unfair that we've uh, besmirched her reputation. I have no reason to doubt that TEA did what they've done for years and suggest continued delay and denial of districts, not thinking that they would be caught, not thinking that a public information request would identify the email where um, the advice uh, was recalled to, to Texas districts. We can't afford for TEA to give mixed messages. It doesn't matter if it's an official communication or a communication of any other sort. It is important that TEA speak um, across the board in every setting about the importance of identifying children who need to be served. TEA is now working on some resources for schools and we're pleased to see that, but we still haven't seen any clear directives on some of the most obvious solutions to find the children who, who uh, need identified. For example, in our state, we know that there are many students currently served by Section 504 and in dyslexia services. Both groups of students, we already know, have disabilities. TEA should be speaking clearly to districts that they need to review all of the children in those programs and look for children who aren't succeeding academically, who have been held back for a year, who are being sent to disciplinary settings, and, and do a folder review on any of those children who are struggling to ask that question. Should this child uh, be suspected of needing special ed services? Should we initiate evaluation? I have yet to see anything from TEA encouraging districts to take that very obvious step. And so that's what, what we would request from them um, at this time. Um, I also think it's important to, to speak to y'all, our disability community and, and other families and concerned professionals and ask that you help us. Uh, we'll keep trying to keep the pressure on TEA to do a better job of educating families about their rights, but here at Disability Rights Texas, we want your help too. So the biggest thing you can do to help us at this point is share these outstanding media articles, share the, the Houston Public Media story, the Houston Chronicle story, share the resources you find on the Disability Rights Texas website, and of course, share the valuable knowledge that many of you have as well. Um, thank you for being the, in this fight with us for the long haul and making sure that we ensure that all Texas students who need special education services are afforded an opportunity to be evaluated and served the way they deserve.